guys, welcome back to Channel Pause Window Cleaning. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to prevent callbacks. Now, uh, a couple of you guys have asked me like, hey Andy, like, how do you do with callbacks? Uh, what do I do to like prevent it? You know, like what, what do I do pretty much? So I just kind of want to make a quick little video for you guys. Uh, essentially what I do personally is uh, like, okay, well, let me rewind. When I used to start, like when I first started doing window cleaning, I literally would like do the works. I would remove paint. I would, you know, clean the window, do whatever, you know, just to make it look perfect. I'll look in every single direction and make everything perfect. Come to find out, I think I was even working harder than I do now in a sense because I see things differently now. So what do I mean by that? So when you first start, you want everything to be perfect because it's like your first client, their first couple of clients, you want everything to be amazing. They're going to be like, wow, clean is clean. And essentially, if you tell them ahead of time, you know, like, hey, I'm doing organic window cleaning or I'm doing construction clean, like removing paint, then you they already separate like the two different sides of the, you know, job, if that makes sense. So if you're doing organic and there's paint left behind, they know already because you literally said in the beginning, you're doing organic window cleaning. If you remove paint, you charge double, which is pretty much a construction clean, if not triple, depending on the job. But essentially, if you set their expectations to what you're gonna offer, then from there, it makes things so much easier. But don't overthink yourself. Don't overthink like, oh man, you know, I need to make everything perfect. The window needs to be like brand new. Just do your best. Sometimes, you know, it's like the best way to think about it is the car wash, right? If you forget the, the ones that have the buffer because that scratches your car, right? But like, let's say you say, okay, I buy a brand new car and you get a like those pretty cool like car washes that, you know, shoot like uh, water around your car and then they just kind of like pressure washing pretty much your car. And then from there, they have like the air that shoots the, the, the water out of your water, <laughs> the water out of your car, right? And then from there, you kind of just drive away. I mean, you have, might have some spots here and there. But if you do that for a brand new car and that car comes out of there, it's going to look brand new right but if the car has not been clean in like five ten years and you do that it's gonna look good but it's not gonna be as perfect right so by keeping this in mind um don't set your expectations that every window especially if they haven't been cleaned in five ten years you need to make it like if they're brand new like the first car that i was kind of giving you an example of right so all you need to do just keep it super simple just go there learn the technique you know what it works best for you right if a window is a certain size you do straight pulls right if a, if a squeegee can go down twice if not once then you're good you don't need to do like a swivel right now if it's more than that then you say okay i'm going to swivel you know do this and that this and that Okay, done deal and that's it right do you have a process of you know taking away little spots here and there like let's say the kitchen windows you know just go there you know clean the window get some steel wool kind of just you know take care of those little oil stains that are on the window move on you're good to go right so the reason why i'm saying that is because nine times out of ten if you just do that simple technique of just cleaning the window like you normally do right have all your solutions your water and everything and just kind of move on that's it you know you don't need to do like a window 15 times in order to move on just go there clean it once move on next window do it once move on next one move it on right but now what happens if it's hot you know of course if it's hot and you know by the time you're like kind of in the middle of the window and it evaporates then you pull out your mop and then do it again and squeegee the bottom that's it right i'm not saying like oh you need to be perfect every single time but you know things like that happen when you're going and you're squeegeeing and then it gets like hot and then you just get your mop go and fix it up there you go the reason why I'm saying that is because at the end of the job, you know, the best thing you can do is just walk around with the client after they're done, after you're done with the job. Because you finish a job, right? And if the client does pretty much a clean window for them, it's like, wow, you know, going from dirty to clean is just like the world to them. But for us, because I'm I kind of like a neat freak, I'm gonna make sure that everything is kind of like perfect, you know, um, a perfectionist, not a neat freak, but that I guess, but perfectionist, right? I want everything to look good. But over the years, I've learned that, you know, if you do this job, the same way every single time at the end they see the windows if they say oh you need to fix this okay no problem boom okay no problem boom oh there's paint here sorry we don't offer that oh okay then boom 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 that's it to be honest i feel like now that i've been doing this longer i don't even think i i mean of course if i miss a window which is very hard but sometimes trust me you're gonna miss a window eventually right because it's like a weird angle and you don't see it on the outside or the inside or it's behind the door that you know it's jammed or locked or whatever stuff like that happens right but i'm just saying like in general i don't get any callbacks because of that reason i go and i said okay let's do a walk around and uh obviously too you want to kind of emphasize that if you want i do it but maybe you guys can do it too just tell the client hey you know we do the job after we're done we have a policy to walk around with you and make sure everything's good then from there you're good to go because um 
in the past I remember a couple of times I would get a call back before this policy I, I implemented this policy um, and I remember one time I did that and they called me and they're like oh there's a mark on my window I need to come uh, clean it up I said all right no problem ended up showing up the window itself had a double pane and the mark was in between the window I'm like oh yeah that's that's uh, in between the window and then they're like oh okay I didn't do anything I didn't even clean the window because it was like oh it's between the panel so I could have prevented that whole drive the whole thing again it was my policy to go back you know touch anything up if anything needed to be touched up but all I'm trying to say is that you know like if you if I would have done that walk around the day of that I did that job and see that mark and she's like oh you missed the mark oh no that's in between the panel would have solved a lot of my issues right so essentially just you know just keep it simple you know just go clean the window once move on if you need steel wool boom if anything needs a razor charge more for that and obviously have a separate contract to say like you know you want to have a scratch waiver sign but you know just keep it simple you know just just go there do what you need to do and that's kind of it you know and uh just if they and then sometimes there is a potential callback but it's now even less because you did the right steps than it was that if you would just leave the job and then you know everyone's happy and then in the middle of the night they're like oh there's a spot there and you have to come back the next day because there's nothing wrong with going back and I'm always happy to go back and touch things up um, but at the same time it's like I could have prevented that the day before not that it's their fault 100% I'm not implementing that I'm saying myself and I'm like man you know I could have just done it yesterday so um, and also don't take uh, any shortcuts either if you know that you it's it might be a little bit difficult to do a window or whatever do it right the first time because people will notice if you try to cut a corner they will notice it the next day or you know eventually um, so that's kind of that but kind of like a bonus to uh, callbacks uh, you guys need to have a policy of like what's the max time that someone can call you back and you touch it up. Does that make sense? I think so. So what I mean by that, like for me, like I have seven days now pushing it, I'll say two weeks, I'll go back, touch something up. Uh, but I remember that I had like one client, I'll give you a really good example. Uh, I'll give you two, um, but the, okay, I'll give you two. But the first one, I remember that I told them I was gonna be up there at a certain time. I showed up like midday because the morning they had people doing stuff so I couldn't go earlier. So she said meet me, I think it was like either 12 or one o'clock. Okay, no problem. Went there, I went by myself. Um, actually, wasn't with me. And so I was going around, you know, cleaning the windows on the inside, outside. I even did their solar panels. I think even their gutters when I had my gutter machine. Uh, but I took care of everything. And uh, I was there, like I said, midday, one o'clock. Uh, very small house though. Um, and it was starting to become like, I think it was like five or six o'clock. I forgot what time it was. Uh, but she was like, okay, actually I have an appointment tonight. I didn't know you were gonna be here the whole day. And I was kind of like, okay but you know you hired me but there was people here in the morning you know I could have you know of course if I was there from the morning then you know and I was there all day that's a different discussion but she wanted me there midday and then she needed to leave at five again it's not a problem but she was like rushing me rushing me rushing me so um, I finished the whole job and I was always polite with her very nice she had like a show to go to I think in Santa Monica or something like that uh, so I needed to put all the screens back on so I was going 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 and you know I was going really fast and you know she's like okay I, you're good you're good let's just get out of here and so I got paid and and then we left everything was good right so about like three months three or four months later her one of her screens uh that was kind of like in a difficult angle came off and i was just like okay she rushed she rushed me and also too now i have to drive across the, across the town whatever the term is go um to the other side of town to just put a screen back on that's three four months later because she rushed me at that point i'm kind of just like hey you know like that's not really my fault um, I like I did ask um, uh, a buddy of mine and he said pretty much hey you know what uh, when it comes to something like that just say hey if I'm in a neighborhood I'll charge you 40 bucks to take care of that and then they see like the importance that you know you're not gonna waste your time to fix something let's just say she didn't rush me but to go fix something that you know if it was within a week you know you could have taken care of but now it's like four months later you know you can always charge for a service like that even though it's below your minimum at least you know you can at least get a little bit of extra money that way so just kind of just having that as an idea for you guys uh, but there was another one that I did uh, another job that I did uh, kind of the same situation uh, but kind of not uh, I wasn't rushed at this job and uh, all the screens were really hard to put on and so um, 
I ended up just kind of like, you know, putting all the screens back on. It was just old house. And so I think we ended up doing it. Everything looked good. Uh, but like three, four months later, she called me and she's like, Andy, you know, like, um, I need you to take care of this and uh, right away. And I was just like, hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm fully booked with work. It's going to be a while for me to come by and just do that. And, she, and I forgot, I even gave her a date like of the earliest that I could do it. And she's all like, no, 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 Andy, it's only going to take, and she's older too. I understand she's older. She couldn't do it herself. Okay. But she's like, oh, no, 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 you need to come right now. Uh, it's, uh, um, how do I say it? It's only going to take you five, 10 minutes again on the other side of town. Uh, but it's just gonna come and I just said hey look this is the earliest and I was doing it for free It was not like I was charging her because like again I, I understand but you know I'm not I have to you know live a life too. She's like no 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 you need to come and I said sorry you know this is something that I should have done four months ago and she just and she didn't text she kept calling me on voicemail voicemail so then I was even considering like man you know like and then she even told me like oh you need to come fix it. I said no it's not my, my our policy is seven days pushing 14 days I mean I didn't even think I told her 14 days I just said that seven because our policy is seven I was like look seven days that's the best I can do you know to come right away but it's been already a couple months I can't so she just was like super upset with me and she's like you know you need to change your policy I don't agree with your policy again I know that she's older and I'm like okay but at the same time I'm like okay that's the earliest I can come and she wanted me to come sooner I'm just like yeah okay I'm not gonna do that so all in all I'm trying to say is that uh, at that point she ended up leaving me a voicemail she's like actually Andy I got it in I just pushed it in and it worked so, <laughs> so I mean I saved myself a job going back and forth to her house but again you kind of need to like you know make sure that your callbacks make sense instead of it being like a charity like oh after three months can you come perfect example I'll give you a perfect example actually last week two weeks ago I don't know I got a client I just did all her windows and she has a lot of windows and I did her skylights right and so what ended up happening was she kept calling me she's like Andy I want my skylights done skylights and I'm like her windows like a couple months ago you know and I was like okay and I tried to contact her she wouldn't answer so finally I got her on the phone and she was just and I was like hey uh, so I just want to let you know it's already been a couple months uh, so I you know unfortunately I'm gonna have to charge you I went way under my minimum but I was like I'm gonna charge you you know like uh, to do the job and she's like no no that's fine no come please take care of the skylights so there's always an option for that so don't always think that they're calling because they need like a service done you know for free but she ended up paying me super happy and you know I got paid extra for that so all in all I'm just trying to share with you guys that you know to prevent callbacks just do a walk around please if I could just say something to you guys and implement it to your business if you're not if you're not doing it right just do a walk around hey let me just walk around with you and then that's gonna prevent so much because like let's say you do skip a window right there right and actually that happened to me one time <laughs> actually I'm gonna do a one last uh, bonus one um, remember that a couple weeks ago I had like that huge commercial complex that uh, that I did it was probably like a couple months ago now um, I did all their outside windows and there were screens that were there and I cleaned the screens too so hopefully you know what I'm talking about not even joking finished the whole job put all my stuff away I was already leaving and then the manager came out he's like oh you forgot a window I was like no nah, I didn't skip a window no, I did of course I didn't tell him that but I was like no nah, I didn't skip a window I said okay let's go check it out I literally skipped a window I was like oh my goodness I can't believe that I skipped a window so you know stuff like that happens too right so ended up going getting my traditional stuff and I ended up cleaning it worked out at the end but still it was just so crazy that I missed the window but thank goodness because he's really on the other side of town and it would have just been the worst to go clean that one up so again it also protects yourself too it's not always their fault or your fault whatever it's no one's fault it's just nice and also the client feels like you care about the job and uh, honestly they really like that a lot so a lot of people actually tell me that that's one of the reasons why they hire me so you know like I said if I can implement something to you guys try to implement that so that you know you don't have to be driving across uh, the city across town to you know do a little touch up that you could have prevented you know the day before a week before so anyways so that's kind of my video today uh so hopefully this helps uh if you made it this far don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next one bye